this is a very important message and therefore I wrote it down and I read it because I do not want to miss any of the points. Most churches want to make salvation easier than it is to attract membership but all that they are doing is lying and selling false security. They are deceiving the people. If you have heard or read the Gospel of Jesus Christ and you believe He is Lord, God manifested in the flesh, and you want to be part of His eternal kingdom, have forgiveness of past sin and the benefits of eternal life with Jesus Christ in heaven, then you have to accept Him as your Lord and Master and comply with His requirements. His requirements are His words as recorded in the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke and John. Read the words of Jesus Christ and count the cost of salvation before making up your mind whether you want to attempt it. Do not be mistaken. If you do not keep on complying with Jesus' requirements until the end, you will not have salvation and you will have wasted your time and effort. If you really want salvation, this is what you have to do in short. Take action. Accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Master. Bow before Him in prayer. Humble yourself before Him. Ask Him to accept you and to forgive your past sin. Repent. Turn away from sin and unrighteousness. Clean up your life. Get rid of the filth. Clean out your house. Get rid of those things that will prevent and distract you from obeying the words of Jesus Christ. Forgive those who sinned against you, or else Jesus will not forgive you. Make right with those whom you have sinned against. Give back what you've stolen. Ask forgiveness from those whom you have harmed. Get rid of your idols, your TV, booze, videos, media, pornography and wrong books. Stop doing those worldly activities that are sinful and that will distract you from obeying Jesus Christ. Break bonds of iniquity, fornication, adultery, homosexuality and wrong relationships. Demonstrate by your deeds that you are ready to follow Jesus Christ. Show fruit of repentance and sin no more. Then be baptized in water as Jesus commanded. What is the meaning of baptism? The Apostle Paul describes it in Romans chapter 6. What shall we say then? Are we to continue in sin so that grace may increase? May it never be. How shall we, who died to sin, still live in it? Or do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus have been baptized into His death? Therefore, we have been buried with Him through baptism into death, so that as Christ was raised from the dead, through the glory of the Father, so we too might walk in newness of life. For if we have become united with Him in the likeness of His death, certainly we shall also be in the likeness of His resurrection, knowing this, that our old self was crucified with Him in order that our body of sin might be done away with, so that we would no longer be slaves to sin. For he who has died is free from sin. Now if we have died with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him, knowing that Christ, 
having been raised from the dead, is never to die again. Death no longer is master over him. For the death that he died, he died to sin once for all. But the life that he lives, he lives to God. Even so, consider yourselves to be dead to sin, but alive to God in Christ Jesus. Therefore, do not let sin reign in your mortal body, so that you obey its lusts. And do not go on presenting the members of your body to sin as instruments of unrighteousness, but present yourselves to God as those alive from the dead and your members as instruments of righteousness to God, for sin shall not be master over you, for you are not under law, but under grace. Water baptism is senseless if we do not repent and do not show fruit of repentance. Do not waste your time to get baptized if you are still living in willful sin. Through our obedience to Jesus Christ, we demonstrate that we are ready to follow Him and to receive the Holy Spirit that He promised to those who obey Him. We need the Holy Spirit in order to follow Jesus Christ and do His will. Jesus Christ is not present here on earth in a physical body. He is present by His Spirit the Holy Spirit that was first given on the day of Pentecost. The Holy Spirit will guide us into all truth as Jesus promised in John chapter 16 verse 12. I have many more things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. But when He, the Spirit of truth, comes, He will guide you into all truth, for He will not speak on His own initiative, but whatever He hears He will speak and he will disclose to you what is to come. He will glorify me, for he will take of mine and will disclose it to you. All things that the Father has are mine. Therefore I said that he takes of mine and will disclose it to you. We cannot follow Jesus Christ and do what is pleasing to him without the Holy Spirit. That was promised to all who obey Him, who repent and are baptized. We read the words of Peter in Acts chapter 2, verse 38. Peter said to them, Repent, and each of you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. For the promise is for you and your children, and for all who are far off, as many as the Lord our God will call to Himself. Once we have been baptized in water, we are ready to seek the baptism in the Holy Spirit. All those who receive the baptism in the Holy Spirit receive a heavenly tongue. They have the ability to speak in tongues immediately and until the end of their lives. Go and read the book of Acts. All those who believed, repented, and were baptized, received the baptism in the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in tongues. It was only after the disciples received the Holy Spirit that they went out and preached the gospel of Jesus Christ with power, under guidance of the Holy Spirit. They went where the Holy Spirit guided them. Go and read the book of Acts and you will see that it is true. The first believers prayed and waited on the Lord Jesus. They prepared themselves, emptied themselves of sin and cleansed their minds and their bodies to be suitable vessels for the Holy Spirit to dwell in. The Holy Spirit does not dwell in a filthy vessel. Prepare yourself, and then seek the infilling with the Holy Spirit. Be filled with the Spirit of Christ until it overflows through your mouth in heavenly tongues and praises to Jesus. Only then are you ready 
to start following Jesus and be guided by His Spirit in you. You can only be guided by the Holy Spirit if you keep on seeking His guidance through prayer, not through Bible study and through listening to other people. We do not receive Holy Spirit guidance through church attendance, studies, religious exercises and fellowship with other believers. It is through prayer and hearing from Jesus. We have to follow Him and the guidance of the Holy Spirit. It is only when we are submitted and obediently doing what He tells us to do that we can serve Him and bear fruit. Do the work that He prepared for us to do in His kingdom. Only then can we serve Jesus Christ in His kingdom. We then experience the kingdom of God that the world cannot see because we serve the King, Jesus Christ, under direct guidance of His Spirit, the Holy Spirit. If we do not obey Jesus and keep on obeying Him until the end, we separate ourselves from Him and His kingdom and we will perish. Salvation is through obeying and serving the King, Jesus Christ, until the very end. Those who withdraw before the end are not worthy of Him. Have you counted the cost of salvation? Are you ready to serve and obey Jesus Christ? until the very end. May Jesus bless you.